Hey, what's going on, everybody? Robert Marzullo here with Ram Studios, and I got uh, another page from the Blackstone Eternal comic book that I'm working on. And here I'm going to show you uh, some inking, and I'm going to make this part narrated, part time lapse, because uh, inking uh, for me it takes a little while. I think almost for anybody, if there's a decent amount of detail on the page. And this one's got a lot of line work and some shadowing and stuff, so it's going to take a little bit to ink it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you a little bit of the process. First off, I take the pencil lines here and convert them to blue line, like so. I'll do that too. Uh, i got a couple layers going on here. And so there's my blue line. I usually tone that down just a smidge. I don't, I don't lower it too much as far as opacity goes. Uh, the blue itself allows me to see you know, what I'm doing with my, uh, my line work. But I'll take it down a little bit about there and I'll add a new layer uh, depending on what uh, whatever setup you're using uh, get your your layer over top with the the black line and just make sure you have a thick to thin brush um, that's all I pretty much use is right there just, just uh, one single brush and I just do a lot of line feathering stuff like that um, what I'll start with on this is I'll go ahead and get my my base thick to thin uh, line work going on so you see how like right here I've got a thicker line it comes down to a thinner line here maybe a thin you know relatively thick to thin there and then maybe a thicker darker shadow on the bottom of the uh, eye ridge here and you pretty much just go around the shape of the uh, character uh, all throughout the entire drawing really and just give it uh, more interesting lines uh, for the perimeter so you know generally the rule of thumb is a thicker line at the bottom where there's going to be more shadow but you'll notice if you look at a lot of different artists and, and styles of what they're doing that's not the only way that they're doing it they're pretty much just bouncing back and forth from thick to thin uh, to make it look more interesting it's it's a lot cooler to go around and do that uh, and add some um, character to the line work than to just trace around it with this big ugly line like that. It looks very, uh, you know, like old cell animation or, you know, just very basic, you know, in comics or, you know, a lot more of a creative medium. Uh, so you want to you wanna add as much creativity into the work as you can. So that means dynamic uh, lighting, you know, uh, a lot of line variation. Another way to make your stuff look very boring is to just go through and give every line that you're shading. You can have this really awesome shading, but if you uh, leave every line the same thickness, uh, too much of the same uh, repetitive uh, patterns or whatever, then it's going to make that that artwork look boring, and the viewer is just not going to stay, you know, enticed to the uh, the piece or you know the book or whatever so you want to do a lot of line variation a lot of thick to thin um, really just practice doing a bunch of different textures like I'll sit there with a blank piece of paper or in this case digital or whatever I happen to be doing that day uh, and I'll sit there and just kind of scribble and come up with different textures you know uh, so one day I might go oh this is a great texture for you know the side of a cliff and some rocks or whatever and I'll hold on to that you know and I'll, I'll post that on the wall over my drawing table or whatever and until I come up with something better and then maybe something else takes that spot you know um, it's kind of a game of memory and it's kind of like one of those things where you know it inspires you when you see that you did something uh, really cool or it works really well you can kind of go in the back of your head you can kind of go man I got that covered I don't have to worry about rock textures any longer or whatever you know but you're always gonna have something you're trying to improve and you know like even the texture of his uh, these are actually kind of exterior uh, bones I kind of picture them as or whatever on this character Krim and I kinda want just the right amount of texturing and shadowing to make it look cool uh, and kinda gruesome you know so I'll go through and add some of the first shadows like that then I'll come back and add some little texture lines you know things like that but it's getting that just that just right amount to where 
you know, it's not overdone, it doesn't look overshaded, and you know, you're trying to convey a message with your lines. And then back here, I'll probably, you know, shadow it all down, make it look like it's wrapping around the head more like that. Some little line work to make it look like I, uh, I give a crap. But I, I do. I do give a crap. Or that I care. The little lines mean that I care. And the the best thing to do when you're when you're doing this stuff, um, probably gonna erase that one, um, is getting like I said that that nice line variation. And you gotta keep in mind too a lot of these. I'm not gonna sit here and put the line variation there <clears throat> when I made the shadow run all the way to the edge. And the reason I made the shadow uh, run all the way to the edge of this character. I'm trying to make it look like he's sitting in a dismal dark kind of lair, cave, whatever. Uh, so I only have a little bit of secondary light hitting him, bounce light, whatever. Um, because he would he would be more in darkness where just a little bit of, you know, the light is catching his face and his musculature and stuff like that. But in a, uh, like say if he was standing there in the middle of a city, then I generally do a lot more bounce light. And bounce light is like this little highlight you see on the chin here, the back of the ear and the back of the head there. So, you know, if you're not an amateur uh, illustrator, you, you definitely probably know what bounce light is. So, but I try to go over some terms that, you know, maybe if you're a little bit newer to illustration work that, you know, you start picking up these terms and this helps you as you start learning this stuff. So, So what I'll go ahead and do now is, oh, well, let me explain a little bit more, sorry. Uh, right now I'm feathering the line just a little bit. You know, I could do one thick to thin pull like that. Sometimes I will, you know, like those aren't looking too bad right now. But I'm, I don't know, I just like feathering all the lines. It's just the way I do things. I feel like I got more control as I do it that way. Uh, and all that is is pulling the same line two or three times and then thinning it down at the point. And then all kinds of variations of like you know of that, like like what I was saying about the uh, the scribbling and stuff. Yeah, and really just feathering the line is uh, just another thing that you practice as you go through the design. Just like that, break it off into some small ones and as far as what I was saying about line variation like say I got these thicker ones to the back of the head there and you can see I've already drawn these ones smaller so you just basically go with that same idea you know you vary the uh, thickness of the lines the width that they're separated by and then just overall the way they might be shaped or texture you know or you're coming up with uh, various textures of you know all these various lines and it it gives you a little bit more you know more tools in your toolbox to do this stuff so you know you don't want to just come out and everything's just the same boring kind of look so you want to try to especially when you're working with digital you got to try to think in terms of what you can mimic that'll look like some cool brush work you know or cool uh, you know work done with a crow quill so to do that you got to really play around with this stuff it's not unattainable um, it's just you know it's gonna take some time for everybody to get used to going digital and figuring out the way to tweak their tools to make them really work like that I feel that I can already do what resembles more like brush work with the way that I do my stuff but uh, I don't feel that I can do cro quite what I've seen done with really nice uh, crow quill work um, and I'll be honest, I just can't get the hang of those stupid crow quills. I think I press down too hard or something or I'm too aggressive with them and I rip up the paper and I get mad and I throw them away. So I don't know why that is. I've never sat down with somebody that's really good with them and, and went through it with them. But um, I'm also, I tend to want to just pencil. I ink because I have to. Uh, I, I don't mind it. I actually enjoy inking. But... Uh, that's one of the reasons why I went digital with my my process is because I wanted to be able to uh, slap the stuff out 
and not get frustrated and throw stuff away. I don't have to do that with this process, but there is a drawback. I mean, I don't get as many originals. You know, I have to, I draw a lot of penciled originals, but uh, I don't get a lot of inking originals. So that's, that's the one drawback to that, you know, so I don't, I don't try to sway anybody, you know, go with what you want to do and what you know, if, if you're more traditional and that feels good for you, then keep that up. But, uh, yeah, I just, it, it happened to work out better for what I'm trying to accomplish. But I know guys that are just straight passionate about their, uh, traditional inking and they just, you know, they don't per se hate digital, but they're not absolutely in love with it either, so... You see, I'm just trying to texture some little lines in there as I go. I'm just kind of, you know, scribbling back and forth and finding what I like in those blue lines and, you know, grabbing some and leaving, picking picking up parts and then leaving parts out, I guess. Giving a little bit of texture, like right there, I don't like it. And the one good thing about digital, right here, boom. Goodbye. I've got to whip out some white out and freak out and get ticked and none of that stuff. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, a little bit more to eh, mess up there. A little bit more texturing. Just like that. And then again, feather some lines from over here. And I love the way this uh, software pulls these lines, or allows me to pull these lines. Uh, this is actually done using uh, Manga Studio, and it's a really intuitive program, very uh, easy to get the hang of, and has the most natural uh, feel to the inking process that I've, that I've been able to find. Um, I want to say... The only one that I like a little bit better for drawing is Sketchbook Pro, but other than that, like, I don't know. I know a lot of guys use Photoshop, and they swear by it, and I, you know, I use it for a few things, but not for my drawings, um, but I don't know. Something about Sketchbook Pro's pencil tool is just feels like you're sketching with paper, so that's pretty neat, and it's cost-effective. You know, that's another big thing, especially being an artist. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. It uh, it can be costly to be an artist, and the return on investment can be tough sometimes. It's unfortunate. Or you can do like what I do, and I do a little bit of uh, some other stuff to, to make some funds. You know, I, I uh, actually own and operate a sign and graphic studio. But I'll be honest, my passion is comics. If if this takes off, like I hope it does, I would uh, I would definitely run with it because I I just love drawing comics. That's that's where my heart is. So, but I also didn't want to be broke, so I do a little bit of the commercial stuff. So, I would have just stayed in my. Uh, my mom's basement and drew comics and got it all going or got really good so I could get accepted into one of the the big deals but my mom didn't have a basement so I was kind of uh, was kind of stuck there you know the crawl space was a little bit too crazy to be drawn in you know, just uh, just one of the things where um, you know sometimes you got to get out there and make a living too so it's unfortunate um, about comics how one of the things I'd have to say that that's really my biggest pet peeve about comics is you see all this great talent these people that are just amazing at what they do and they put their heart and their soul and their passion into it and it is one of the toughest ways to to make a living and you gotta you gotta not only be great at what you do but you also have to like work your way up in this pecking order, the social standing of it, and I think that that's kind of unfortunate because, you know, I get that every every business, I'm a businessman, every, every business has its networking, but it's almost like a who's who of, 
of, a, of an industry and I think that gets in the way sometimes of what it should really be about but I don't know that's politics I'm not gonna get into all that but I'll try to stay focused here on the uh, the inking and I'm just showing you basically like how I'm just working through this and I'm just taking my time and you know flowing the lines I'm not um, it's not rocket science obviously but you know, I'm just kind of picking parts I want to keep in the design and parts I want to get rid of that's really all you're doing you know you don't have to stay entirely tight to the pencils especially in this case these are my pencils so I really don't have to worry about you know am I gonna offend some artist uh, but you know even with that if you're a good inker and you can bring something to the table by you know changing the lines just a little bit tightening them up or um, you know just bring bringing some life to them most most artists if they're not just you know egotistical maniacs they're not gonna mind that you know it's it's a collective process they're gonna want to see you better the artwork um, you know without entirely changing it you know without mucking it up or without uh, you know just putting your own spin on it so much that it you know totally wipes out the other guys work that would suck you know you don't want to do that but um, and you know you'd have to develop your relationship with an anchor I, I don't know why I'm talking about that because honestly I've never worked with an anchor other than the side projects at the actual shows when we'll just be messing around and um, I, I did have one uh, one guy ink my stuff at a uh, on a small uh, short story or whatever that was pretty cool you know because I am honestly haven't got to work with an anchor a lot throughout my uh, my career in comics so I pretty much inked all my own stuff so and not for any other reason other than it's you know it's been the way that it is, it is what it is it's not so much that I'm like oh I can't let anybody ink over my precious work you know I, I don't look at it like that shoot I don't even look at my originals like that you know I now it's digital I definitely don't care but um, I just always like doing it myself I guess even though it does slow down the process you know if you're really trying to pump a book out uh, you might want to get a creative team and and get everybody on each task or you know your deadlines are gonna come up pretty fast on you okay so that's enough of me blabbing hopefully you can see what I'm doing here just kinda you know thicker lines at the base of, of uh, the object um, try to picture your shadows as you're filling stuff in and you know not not tracing around the entire object or shape or whatever you're working with everything is thick down to thin back to thick and you know the, again this is getting shadowed so this line didn't matter but I'm trying to show you right there that that's how like I'll come over and do part of this you want thick then even where it disappears picks back up thick thin thick thin picks back up thick and that, that that's a more interesting look and that's what that's what most comics are and then um, and then the you know the other main thing is line variation and think in terms of texturing you know picture that you're picture that you're painting but the only paint that you have is black and white and your your variances of that black and white your gray tone or whatever is all based on the textures and the line work that you create in that process so that's why you have to mess around with all these different lines and these ways that you uh, break off your lines into shadowing like this you know maybe bring these into some little lines like that like that and there's and that's another little bit of texturing right there as simple as that is you know and you know keeping in mind that I'm probably gonna lose that in the size reduction so you don't want to do unnecessary texturing um, that you are gonna lose it's always good to when you're working on stuff like this to zoom back and see oh goodness I'm, I'm working at a uh, what's gonna end up being one inch of the page or half inch of the page what am I doing and I can't waste time there you know so but alright so that's probably enough of that hopefully to explain it um, I'll go ahead and start time lapsing this and maybe I'll stop you know a little bit into it or just when I'm done um, you know and, and feel free to drop in some questions let me know what exactly you need explaining when I do this kind of stuff 
um, and I'll be able to go from there and then try to better these videos for you hopefully so so stay tuned I'm gonna time lapse this now and let's see how this uh, this page comes out
Okay, we're almost there. I just figured I'd slow down the video for a minute and explain uh, one other thing that I'm going to do right here. Uh, I'm going to start working on this panel, and one of the things is about this is this is a smaller panel, obviously a uh, more pulled back shot of uh, Krem talking to his, you know, disciple, minion, whatever, uh, and kind of chastising him. Well, since it's a pulled back shot and there's you know not a lot of detail there it's kind of just uh, you know um, basic uh, rudimentary detail and shadowing I want to make sure that I don't zoom in this is mainly a digital issue but it, it can be an issue even with uh, drawing traditionally but it is very much an issue with digital uh, I'm actually not going to zoom in any further than what I am right now uh, to make sure that I don't spend too much time uh, adding details and uh, getting too in depth with a panel that's going to be reduced down and be, you know, uh, a fraction smaller, quite a bit smaller. So, just something to keep in mind. I just figured I would explain that because um, it is a pitfall that, you know, some artists make and myself included, where, you know, y your natural urge and tendency is to want to just keep adding detail and detail make it look better and better and although while in some of your pinup shots that's that's gonna be okay uh, you don't want to do that and you know these larger whoops build that in black oh, um, are these smaller panels you know you want to you want to basically um, only put you know what you have to time wise into it to uh, make deadlines and get books out so uh, again, this one, you know, can be more, uh, you know, thicker blacks, less line work, um, things like that. So, okay, I'll speed it back up. I just wanted to explain that, and uh, we'll get this thing done. Okay, well here it is. This is the finished ink product of uh, the Blackstone Eternal page. Uh, can't remember. I think this is page four. I um, believe so. Page four of book two, uh, Blackstone Eternal by Robert Marzullo. And uh, hopefully you liked that. Hopefully it taught you something about the inking process. Uh, if you want more inking videos, there's a few of them on here. On my channel, I mean. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, if there's something I could explain in further detail to you. Uh, some people learn just by watching, but others, you know, need a little bit more explanation. Uh, I am okay with that. I, you know, I'm here to share. So if you get anything that uh, you want to know about this process, uh, just message me and I will 
try to respond as quickly as possible. So thanks very much for watching and uh, more to come. Keep drawing. Bye-bye.